Okay, class, let's take a look real quick at uh, quiz one from polynomials. This is material uh, that is coming back for your unit test. Just want to make sure everyone is solid on what we did on uh, this particular unit. So degree of polynomials. So a degree is the exponent that corresponds to the highest term, the, the exponent of the highest order term. So if you look at this one, don't fall for the trick. Normally it's the first term, but that six degree, that is the, the, the degree. So this is a degree six, that is the highest exponent I see. Leading coefficient, the number in front of that term is a negative two. If I look at the next one, um, these are two binomials multiplied. When you multiply these two things, you get six x squared, plus x minus 1. That is a second degree polynomial with a leading coefficient of 6. Direct substitution. So it's just substituting this value of negative 2 everywhere you see an x. So this is 4 times negative 2 cubed minus 3 times negative 2 squared plus negative 2 plus 1. So that's 4 times negative 8 minus 3 times 4 minus 2 plus 1. So negative 32 minus 12 minus 1. So that is negative 44 minus 1 or negative 45. The other way we learn to evaluate a polynomial would be synthetic substitution. Later we call that synthetic division. So substituting a negative 2 into this synthetic division. So here I'm going to write my coefficients. So I've got x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x, and constant. Sometimes it's helpful to write those things down first. What's the coefficient of x to the fifth? Negative three. Of x to the fourth, zero. x cubed, one. x squared, negative one. x, zero. Constant, one. And then it's just perform, bring the negative three down. Negative two and negative three. Negative two times six. So that gives me a negative 11. Negative two times negative 11 is 22. That is 21. Multiply here, get negative 42. Multiply negative 2 and 42, and you get 84. Add those numbers to get 85. So your answer here is 85. Perform the indicated operation. Um, we didn't do a lot of these, but you should know how to do This is subtraction. Several people did multiplication here, or division. Uh, this is subtraction. So this is x squared minus x minus 2x squared minus x plus 3. If you combine like terms, you get negative x squared minus 2x plus 3. 2x minus 1 cubed. There are two ways of doing this. We had a formula. So if you know the formula, a minus b cubed is equal to a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed. <clears throat> So that's our formula for cubing, and we'll do that, or we'll multiply this out and do it another way in just a moment. So if I apply the formula, in this case, a is 2x and b is 1. So this is going to be 2x cubed minus 3, 2x squared times 1, plus 3, 2x, 1 squared minus 1 cubed. So this is 8x cubed minus 3 times 4x squared 
plus 6x minus 1, or 8x cubed minus 12x squared plus 6x minus 1. So that's using the formula. Now, if you did not know the formula or weren't quite sure of it, you can always do this just by writing 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1. When I multiply these first terms together, I get 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. That now needs to be multiplied by 2x minus 1. So in order to do that, I will make a grid for that. So 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And that gets multiplied by 2x minus 1. When I do that multiplication, 2x times 4x squared, that is 8x cubed. 2x times negative 4x, that is negative 8x squared, 2x times 1, and then negative 4x squared, 4x, and negative 1. So this translates to 8x cubed minus 12x squared plus 6x minus 1. This answer should be the same as this answer, and they do match. Okay, so two ways of getting to that answer. Here I've got a couple of multiplications. I find the easiest thing to do, and it breaks it down into, you know, all the operations into sort of simple pieces, is just to make a grid so that I make sure I count for everything. So x squared minus 2x plus 4. Multiply this out. This is 3x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x x squared minus 2x plus 4. This is 3x cubed minus 5x squared plus 10x plus 4. Okay. So it's just making a grid. It's just an easy way of, uh, of getting that um, in, in the right form. It breaks everything down to, you know, I know that I've accounted for everything. Two things multiplied by three things. There should be six things here. Um, if you try to do this in your head or you try to look at it, uh, you know, you might miss one of the multiplications. The grid makes me fill in all six. Same thing here. x squared minus 2x plus 1. 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. Multiply this out, I get 2x to the 4th and minus 4x cubed, 2x squared, and 3x to the cube, minus 6x squared, 3x, minus 4x squared, 8x minus 4. So this answer is... 2 x to the fourth and minus x cubed and let's see minus 10 plus 2, minus 8 x squared plus 11 x minus 4 okay problem 9 factoring and this is where you've got all of your rules of factoring you have to keep at your fingertips the greatest common factor, difference of squares, factor by grouping, factoring trinomials, um, the sum of cubes, the difference of cubes. The easiest thing to do when you look at something is, do they have anything in common? When I look at this, there is an x in every term. So I can factor out an x. Now if you look at what is in parentheses, that's four terms. The only method I had for factoring that was factor by grouping. So can I factor these two things separately? Answer is yes. If I look at those first two terms, there is an x to the fourth in common, and that leaves me with x squared minus 1. Bring down that minus sign. 
the next two terms, there is a 16. So that is x squared also minus 1. Now I have this x minus 1 in both places, so this can be factored as x. x to the 4th minus 16, x squared minus 1. I look at the parentheses. Both of these now are the difference of squares. This is x. x squared minus 4. x squared plus 4. x minus 1. x plus 1. That's using the difference of squares. Now, I'm not completely done because this one can go further. That is now the difference of squares. The one to the right of it is the sum of squares. I have no formula for that. So my final answer is going to be x, x minus 2, x plus 2, and then copy down everything else you see above. x squared plus 4, x minus 1, x plus 1. Okay. So what did I have to use? I had to use the greatest common factor. I had to use factor by grouping. And I had to use the difference of squares. And I think I had to use that formula one, two, um, three, four times to get to my final answer. This is the difference of cubes. Okay. If you do not know this formula, you will not know how to factor this. Okay. So a cubed minus b cubed, that is a minus b, a squared plus a b plus b. We talked about the way to remember that is when you look at this a cubed minus b cubed, you've got a minus b. This is the same sign as what you see there is a minus sign. This is the opposite sign, and this one is always positive. Okay. So if I factor this, the cube root of this is going to be the 27x cubed. That is 3x minus 2. And then when I square this first term, I get 9x squared, and then plus 6x plus 4. That is it. So it's fairly easy, not a lot of work, but the, uh, um, the requirement is you know the formula. If you don't know the formula, this is a hard one to do. Solve the following equation by finding the complete factorization and then giving all real number solutions. We like to solve equations that are set equal to zero. This is not a quadratic, but it is in quadratic form. So I've got something to the fourth and something squared. I can factor this just like I do a quadratic. So can I find two numbers? that multiply to give me 100 and add to give me a negative 29. Those numbers are negative 4 and negative 25. You multiply those to get 100, you add to get negative 29. So I will write this as 4x to the 4th minus 4x squared minus 25x squared plus 25 equals 0. And I will factor this by grouping. First two terms have a 4x squared in common, and that leaves me with x squared minus 1. Bring the minus sign down. If I factor out a 25 here, x squared minus 1 equals 0. This is 4x squared minus 25 times x squared minus 1 equals 0. Each of these is the difference of squares. So this is 2x uh, minus 5, 2x plus 5, x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0. So my set of solutions, when I set each of those equal to 0, I'm going to get plus or minus 5 halves and plus or minus 1. Those are all the solutions to uh, this poly polynomial. 
solve the following equation by finding the complete factorization and then giving all real number solutions. So x to the fifth minus 4x cubed plus x squared minus 4 equals 0. There are no common factors. Only method I have, if this works, is going to be grouping. So let's factor out an x cubed. And I get x squared minus 4 plus x squared minus 4 equals 0. And this is x cubed plus 1 x squared minus 4 equals 0. The first thing there is the sum of cubes. We have a formula for factoring the sum of cubes. So this is x plus 1 x squared minus x plus 1. The next thing you see is the difference of squares. That's x minus 2 x plus 2 equals 0. Now anytime you factor from the sum or difference of cubes, so when I go from here and I get this quadratic, this quadratic only has complex solutions. So if I had asked you for all solutions, you would have to use quadratic formula for that. In this case I only asked for the real solutions. So the real solutions are going to be x equal negative 1, 2, and negative 2. If I ask for the complex solutions or all solutions, you're going to have to use the quadratic formula on the quadratic term. Long division. So let's set this up. I need to divide 2x plus 1, divide that into 2x cubed minus x squared plus 9x plus 12. So you basically just look at the first terms. What do I multiply a 2x by to get a 2x cubed? That is x squared. Now perform that multiplication. x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. x squared times 1 is x squared. Okay. Now people, I see this mistake over and over again. The next step is all of this has to be subtracted. A common mistake is to subtract the first term but not the second term, okay? 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, that's 0. Negative x squared minus x squared, that's minus 2x squared, okay? If for some reason you get a 0 with that, you've made a mistake for the rest of the problem. So you've got to be very careful when you get to this step. I always put a parenthesis and I put a minus in front of everything because everything has to be subtracted. Now go back to the divisor again. What do I multiply 2x by to get negative 2x squared? That's going to be a, what, negative x. So when I do that multiplication, I get negative 2x squared minus x. And I have to subtract all of that. So this negative 2x squared minus negative 2x squared, that's 0. 9x minus negative x, that's 10x plus 12. Okay. Now what do I multiply 2x by to get a 10x? That is a 5. When I do that I get 10x plus 5. Subtract these and I get 7. And that is my remainder. So my final answer is um, x squared minus x plus 5 plus 7 divided by 2x plus 1. So I think most people got the concept here. It's just the, the arithmetic mistakes uh, that, are, that are getting in the way. Another example, long division. Um, x minus 1. Divide that into x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. What do I multiply x by to get x cubed? That's x squared. When I do that multiplication, I get x cubed minus x squared. I will always put a parenthesis here and a negative in front of that. Okay. When I do this operation, the x cubes go away. Negative 3x squared minus negative x squared. That's minus 2x squared. Bring down everything else that I see above. 
what do I multiply x by to get negative 2x squared? That is a negative 2x. So negative 2x squared plus 2x. Put a minus in front of all of that, and you get you're left with x minus 1. Okay. What do you multiply x by to get an x? That's a 1. When you multiply this, you get x minus 1. When you subtract that, you get 0. So there is no remainder. So x squared minus 2x plus 1 is the, uh, the answer for this. And then synthetic division. So when I'm dividing by x plus 1, Okay, so I'm trying to test, is x plus 1 a factor? So is x plus 1 a factor? Or is x equal negative 1 a solution? So I start with a negative 1 here. That's a fourth degree polynomial. I will need something to the fourth. I'll need a cube. I'll need a square. I'll need an x. And I'll need a constant. So my x to the fourth term is 1. My x cubed term is 0. My x squared is negative 10. My x is 0. My constant is 9. So if I bring this down, negative 1, negative 1. Multiply here, I get 1. That is minus 9. Multiply here to get 9. And this is negative 9. That is a 0. This is my x cubed, my x squared, my x, and my constant. With a zero remainder, that means that yes, these are factors of each other. And the answer would be x cubed minus x squared minus 9x plus 9. The next one here, I'll set up the synthetic division with a 4. I'm going to need an x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x, and constant. So this is 2, negative 7, negative 4, negative 3, 13. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 4, that's 0. 4 times 0 is 0. And 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And I add those and get a 1. So I have a remainder here. Is x minus 4 a factor? No, it is not, because I have a non-zero remainder. So my answer is, this is my, that's my x cubed, x squared, that's my x, that's my constant, that's my remainder. So 2x cubed plus x squared, and there is no x term, minus 3 plus 1 over x minus 4. Okay, that is it. I'm not going to work the bonus um, because you won't see that on the, uh, the upcoming test. But this is working the first quiz of polynomials that we had in preparation for your upcoming unit test.